And hello and welcome to today's virtual field trips. I will be your host, Mr. Coach D. Today we have our special guest, Mrs. Krejci down from the library. Say hello, Ms. Krejci. Good morning or good afternoon. No, good morning. It's still morning. It is still morning. Yes, 11 o'clock. Good day. Um, good day, I say. Good day, ma'am. And uh, I wanted to say thank you to you for volunteering to take us to Germany today. Um, that my parents have actually been to Germany because I have an uncle who is a retired lieutenant colonel of the Air Force, and he was stationed in Frankfurt or maybe Rammstein. Not 100% sure about the location of that, but my parents got to go. Um, visit him during that time period and when I was a senior in high school and they left me all alone um, during football season for like a few weeks so I had the house to myself for a few weeks I felt like an adult well that is good yeah yeah <laughs> well um, that in, in a, in a um, somewhat related sense that's what took me to Germany is um, I did my um, library internship so when you go and get a master's of library science you have to do an internship and I did mine with a department of defense school but I was on an army base okay. but it wasn't far from where you're talking about there is in the south west corner of Germany there's a huge air force base mm -hmm. and um the one I was at was it near Frankfurt too but it was an army base Awesome. Uh, well, I am excited and I'm even more excited that you kind of made the slideshow already. Um, I'm going to pull that up. Um, here we go. I'm going to share that. And then now I'm going to Mrs. Krejci decided to go ahead and kind of fill us in with her um, slideshow. It looks like we got a lot of cool things to come and check out today. She even made her background a German flag, which is super cool. And so, uh, Mr. D. Etcheberry, I, what I did is I was going to intersperse um, going to the map. Okay. Um, while I showed that slideshow, is it possible for me to, to share my that screen? Would, that would be awesome. I'm going yeah. to stop my screen right now and I'm going to allow Hi, you to I share have. yours. Hi, uh, Andrew. Um, we have, let me see. Um, one person can share at a time. I don't know. Can you can you try and press share? See what happens. Yeah, let me give it a shot. Host disabled attendee screen sharing. Rude. Okay. All right. Let's see. Try that again. And all right. How about that? All right. Let's give it a shot. Yep. Looks like it's gonna let. Wait. All right. Let me find it. I very much take after Miss Walls and I like to have lots of screens open at one time. You have right. I, I counted one time in a faculty meeting how many tabs Miss Walls had open on the screen and yeah. legit, the lady had 30 tabs open. Yeah I take after her but I don't have too many open today because I inadvertently closed them all earlier this morning. <laughs> I was like no! Oh no. Okay. So yeah, that, let me just minimize some of this stuff here on my screen. You probably can't see it. All right, so um, I have been to Germany three times. Um, the first time, I think I was just traveling with some friends through Europe. And then the second time I got this really great opportunity to go over there and live for six weeks um and do my library internship at a school on an army base in germany um and then i went again um to visit friends that i had made during my library internship who still were living in germany i went back and visited them so if you have friends that you can go visit that's the best thing to do because then you have somewhere free to stay <laughs> all right all right so, so can i ask you a question real quick miss Krejci? Sure. Is, your, is your last name German? No, my last name is Czech. Okay. It's, um, and it means Taylor in English. Oh, okay. And so I've also, when I went uh, to Germany, I, I can't remember if I went all three times. 
at least twice I went to the Czech Republic because it's, it's right next door and I went to Prague. And so um, actually one of the things is one, one time um, I flew into Prague and as I was going through customs, this very scary, like KGB looking guy, you know, like crew cut, big uh -huh. guy, he was looking through my passport and he was like, crazy. Mm. And then he started talking to me in Czech and I was like, I said, all I know is Yaxi Mash, Sonny <laughs> uh, I know how to say, you know, Pivo, a few things, Kalachi, and he mm. put my passport and he's like, that is very disappointing. And he handed it back. I was like, sorry. Don't. So mm. that was my fun little going through uh, scary, you know. So, okay, so here's the map. And if you flew straight from Austin to Frankfurt, Germany, um, it would be 12 and a half hours. Typically, I have flown, when I've flown, though, we have a layover in Atlanta. So it's like four hours to Atlanta, then eight hours to Germany. So okay. it's a pretty long flight. Yeah. I mean, you are going across the Atlantic Ocean. Yes. So here is Frankfurt, Germany. And if you can see, it's kind of in the um, southwest quadrant of Germany, um, pretty close to France, um, but it's a small state, I mean a small country. And so the thing about what we're looking at now, like Germany and France and a bit of Czech combined, that whole area, I mean that's about the size of Texas. So that's the thing is you can go from country to country in hours. Right. So of course in Texas you got to drive all day to get out of there. So if you look to the um, east of Germany or to the right, that is the Czech Republic. And right there where it says Prague, um, near there is actually where my family immigrated about 150 years ago. They came over from there. Well, I'm going to piggyback off of that on your map, okay? Okay. We go to the very bottom of France. We see like where Toulouse is in Montpellier. You see at the bottom in France? It says Toulouse. Yes, hang on. Let me move my, I got you guys sitting in front of it. Okay. Yes, I see Toulouse. Oh, like that region down there. So the region that separates France from Spain is a group of mountains called the Pyrenees Mountains. Mm -hmm. And the Basque people live along the Pyrenees Mountains. Uh, that's, they fought for their own autonomous country and things like that, um, which they did not get. But that area is where the Basque people are from, and my last name, D. Echeverry, is actually Basque. So. Really? Mm -hmm. That is so fancy. The Pyrenees are definitely on my bucket list because mm. there are some amazing abbeys and um, actually some Roman structures there. And um, I, there's a book called um, Winter Ghost. Have you ever read this? It's like set in the Basque country. I have not. Very good. All right, I will. I do not you. know that, Mr. Dietchiberry. What does Dietchiberry mean? Of so it means of the new house. So de means of, Eche means new, and veria or very in this case would mean house. So of the new house. That is so cool. I did not know that. And so I told you a little bit earlier that Krejci actually means tailor in English. Really? And so, um, it's probably an occupation, like a tailor that sews. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. That is very interesting. I love, love, love learning about people's um, names. Like, I'm really into that. It's more French than anything else for me. So, um, when my dad had gone to France, he, um, he took my mom to Paris um, years back, and they had said that his name was... Deshaberi, right? Deshaberi, mm -hmm. and he, dad and grandpa have always pronounced it Dietchaberi, right? But, but it's not, we're not French in Texas, so. I'm going to start calling you Dietchaberi. Dietchaberi. Hey, I right. see Jude. I hadn't seen him earlier. Hi, Jude. How are you? Hi, Regina. I see a few people that I didn't see earlier. Hi, guys. Oh. Hey, I see you guys. So nice to see you. Okay, sorry. I got distracted. It's okay. Um, just so nice to see everybody's face. Um, okay, so let me back up. 
I'm going to mostly talk about historical sites because I did go see a lot of historical sites. Okay. Um, yesterday while I was making this during my office hours, a student was helping me and he's like, Miss Krejci, that's an awful lot of history. He's like, what about today? <laughs> and so I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say something about modern times. Uh -huh. Just so you know, today Germany is a democratic nation and um, their prime minister is a woman named Angela. Oh God, what is her last name? I can't think of it right now. Um, but they do have uh, basically like the equivalent of our president. They have a woman president. Most of the people in Germany live in um, cities and it's very modern. Actually, the German people just, to me, my take is that they love anything modern. Very, very modern. They like technology. They're very environmentally conscious. Their houses are really cool. They do all kinds of innovative things with their houses. So even though I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of history of Germany, I just want you to know that the people are very modern. They live in cities. Their houses are very modern. Um, so just, I don't want you to think that, you know, it's just history, history, history. Well, That's this just, is uh, the German prime minister, Angela Merkel. Merkel, thank mm, you. Yep, see, fancy. Yeah, she, and so um, I just want y'all to know that because um, when I went to, so you have to understand my undergraduate degree from Texas A&M is um, medieval European history degree. Wow. That's my, that's my undergraduate degree. Wow. It's actually that's medieval, impressive. <laughs> yeah. It's actually medieval Europe to early modern period um, history. And people used to always say, what in the world are you going to do with that degree? And I would say, I'm going to win Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That is excellent. You but probably yeah. really would win Jeopardy, though. Well, as long as it's about medieval Europe, I'm there. So, um, so that's why a lot of my stuff, I went and saw stuff that um, I had only read about in textbooks. Okay. And that it to me it was like oh my god I only read about this in a textbook and there it is in front of me so if you will pardon me a lot of this is going to be history. Um, there's a lot of German history that I think people know a lot about like World War One, World War Two, the Nazis. Um, I'm going to focus mostly on ancient history because that's what I was most interested in. So here's a couple little factoids about Germany. Um, Julius Caesar actually named it Germania. The German people don't call themselves German. They call themselves Deutsch, and they call Germany Deutschland. Um, why, is, why is that? Why is it the Deutschland? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look that up. The people are the Deutsch, Deutsch, Dutch, Dutch. Deutsch. 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 And they call themselves, um, they call Germany Deutschland. Um, we call it, because of Latin, because Latin, you know, dominates so many languages, we call it Germany because that's what Julius Caesar named it when the Romans had conquered it. Mm. Um, there is a lot of Roman ruins because 2,000 years ago, about the turn of the millennium, mm -hmm. um, the Romans conquered the tribes that lived in that area. So I was really fascinated about that because a lot of modern buildings are built on the foundation of Roman buildings. Oh, wow. And so like if you go into the basement of a lot of churches and buildings, you're actually in the basement of a Roman home and building. And I, that just blew my mind that yeah. I'm like, I'm in a 2000 year old basement here. So. Um, All right, we got a question it looks like from Judah the Crowder. Hello, Hi, Judah. Judah. What's that? Uh, so, I um, I had a question about Germany. Yes, sir. Um, so Germany, like Germany was just um, basically it was split up in it was split up in World War Two. So. Is there anybody else other than ethnic, ethnic Germans in, in Germany as well? Still? Oh my God, dude, that is such an amazing question. Can I take this one? 
Mr. Go ahead. Of course, you are the tour guide. Okay, so what we call modern Germany is a relatively very new designation. Really, um, before World War One, so a hundred years ago, about was World War One. Actually, what there was was a bunch of small kingdoms with their own prince. And this huge dynasty called the Habsburgs pulled all those little kingdoms together into this really huge um, kingdom that actually stretched from um, north, like Germany, some of France, down through Switzerland, across the Baltics, even down into Italy. So it was this ginormous kingdom. And during World War I, um, that's one thing that happened that came out of World War I is they, they cut up all of the Habsburg's kingdoms into smaller countries. So yes, there's a lot of areas in Germany, like in the um, sort of in the West between France and Germany, they call that the Alsace-Lorraine. And they've been fighting over that area for hundreds of years because they say it's French. And then they say, no, it's German. No, it's French. And then along the Swiss border, same thing. And along the Czechoslovakian border, um, there's a lot of Czech people. And so it's, um, Germany today is, it's a very, really relatively new country. Before World War I, they, no one would have recognized it as Germany as, as we do. But Julius Caesar had called that land region Germania. So that's a great question. Sorry. Oh, Longer than you wanted. I love history. <laughs> oh, <excited. laughs> um, I used to like. I used to love like the history of like the world wars. So it, it's just some more information for me. Well, Jude, when we get back to school, come back in the library, and I will talk to you to your heart's content about it because I love it too. And also, I, my friend. He knows a guy that knows Alex Trebek. <laughs> well, maybe you could put my name in. Yeah, Jeopardy. you need to get Miss Krejci on the uh, on the uh, Jeopardy. <laughs> okay, so um, oops, what? Couple quick things. The the um, Frankish people who kind of lived in the German Germania area around 100 AD, they forced the Romans out and back to Italy. And so the Frankish people were kind of the first to claim that area. Well, not the first, but they were, they were the ones that forced the Romans out. And so um, after the Roman Empire crumbled, about 500 AD, most of Europe fell into a very, they call it the Dark Ages, because all oh. learning and language and writing fell away. But there's this really interesting king around 800 um, AD who was very enlightened and he's one of my like heroes his name is Charlemagne and he's a really interesting guy because while the whole um European area was in the dark ages he was like hey let's bring back learning let's bring back writing and so he did some really cool things so that's neither here nor there it's just some factoids okay so the first place I'm going to take you guys to is where I flew in and where I worked very close to it's called Frankfurt and um, there's a big river that runs through it called the Main River, the Mon, Mon River. And so those Frankish people who pushed out the Romans, they named the city because actually there was a little strip of land where they could ford the river. And so they would travel to that ford and they called it the Franks Ford or Frankfurt. All right. Miss Critchie, so, can you explain what a ford might be? Oh, yes. So it's a very wide river that moves very rapidly. But there's one spot in the river where it gets really narrow and, the, and they could cross the uh, river safely at that point because it wasn't that hard to cross. So like they put down rocks and logs and stuff to create, cross the river. So a ford is a point in a river where it's the best place to cross if you don't have a bridge. Is that good? That's perfect. I, I definitely didn't know what that meant. I mean, I know what a fjord is, but not necessarily uh, what you had said. Before bridge, like the pioneers, when they were crossing, you know, through Texas and stuff, before there were bridges, 
um, they would, they'd sometimes have to travel like a hundred miles to find a narrow spot in the river where they could mm -hmm. board it or cross it without, right. because there's lots and lots of stories about people getting swept away, pioneers and stuff. Because a river, you don't know sometimes, you step in and it goes faster than you think. Okay. Oh, and these two pictures in here, um, the one on the left is the Jewish cemetery, and the one on the right is the wall that runs around the Jewish cemetery. And so um, one very, um, dark, I guess it's kind of a darker note, is I visited this Jewish cemetery, and so actually Frankfurt was built on the money from Jewish people, they lent money. But during World War II, um, Frankfurt suffered some of the worst um, losses in the Jewish people. They were like one of the primary targets of the Holocaust. And so I thought that was bitterly ironic that Frankfurt was built on the money of the Jewish people, but um, during World War II, um, almost like something like 95% of all Jewish people in Frankfurt were, were wiped out. And so like 45,000 Jewish people were killed. So that was, you know, that's the one thing about Germany is it's really beautiful and there's all these wonderful places to visit, but then you will wander across something from Nazi Germany that just takes your breath away. And it's a reminder of how terrible World War II was. Uh, you know, I, I've done a, a lot of uh, extensive study into World War One, World War II, um, and I taught it during when I was teaching Texas history, and I taught it while teaching world cultures, uh, but the most important thing I'd like to uh, announce right now is that Miss Campbell is in the Zoom right now. Miss Campbell? Hi. Oh my God, I love Miss Campbell. I love you. <laughs> Ms. I Campbell. thought I'd come learn from you. It's so nice to see you. I miss you so much. You too. I've uh, so been involved in the awards committee, and Miss Campbell and Mr. Taylor have uh, had a, a group chat that's probably spanned about <laughs> 500 messages in the last few days. It's yeah. been insane. And I see that Rini and Omar is in this chat. She's my, uh, I don't know if she's seen it yet, but. She's my seventh grade artist of the year. What, what? That's amazing. <laughs> She's amazing. Sorry, I'll, I'll let you get back to your presentation. Mm. That is very exciting news. You can, you can take it away. <laughs> you heard me, you missed my like somewhat, somewhat apology earlier. I love history. My undergraduate degree is history. Cool. So um, a lot of this is just history. That's awesome. I love so, it. Yeah, so. Uh, you get my semi-apology for going on and on and geeking out about history, okay? <laughs> that is something you should not apologize for. I'm here oh. for it. So I just wanted to say that, Ms. Krejci, like, you know, you got 12 people in on your stuff today. I average about six to seven, so you are our draw today. I love you all. I miss you peeps so much. I really do. I miss you guys so much. Is, okay. that, is that a picture of you? Can you press the present button? It makes it larger for us on our end. So, uh, sorry about the terrible quality. This is an old fashioned picture that I took a picture of because I could not find the digital file. Um, this is in Frankfurt. And so that person I'm standing by, um, I think his name was Alfred, Alred, Alred, something like that. He was a very, I don't know, that might be Charlemagne actually. But anyway, he's a Frankish king, and so there's a huge statue, statue of him in Frankfurt. So I'm sorry about the poor quality, but I was like, okay, well, I'll just take a picture of a picture. And so the interesting, that's, for, that's Charlemagne right there that you're standing next to. I, you know, I think it is Charlemagne. Let me look closer. Yeah, it does. It looks like a representation of Charlemagne, but it could be a Frankish king. That would make more sense because I'm in Frankfurt. It was 15 years ago. So. I'm going to crop that just so we can see it just a little better. <laughs> All right, let me do it like that. And then it'll blow it up a little bit. You want me to escape so you can share? Or actually, what I was going to do at this point is on the map, I was going to go to Frankfurt. Well, let's go. I just wanted to make that I'll picture a little clearer. 
So the interesting thing about Old Town Frankfurt, so it's very modern. It has very modern areas. It has all the same um, stuff that modern cities do. Like they have a lot of problems with graffiti and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but what, what I was really interested in was um, the Old Town. Let me see if I can find that on the map. <clears throat> Are they not gonna show me any pictures? Okay, here it is right here. So like, here's a picture of the city hall and it shows you the old town was right down here by the river. Most of the old settlements obviously were by the river. And so the old town is down here. And the interesting thing to me was that um, during World War II, it was completely obliterated. So all these buildings like that you see like over here on the left, uh -huh. like clicked on it they rebuilt everything because we that was one of the places that the allies just bombed the heck out of and so actually a lot of the german cities and stuff that i'm going to show you is um it, it, it was really bombed everything was bombed and and they don't let you forget if you go into a historical building they have a picture of what it looked like when it was devastated and like, <laughs> the english did this yeah <laughs> a picture and they're like but we rebuilt and so oh by the way down here flugenhofen is airport flugenhofen yeah the flugenhofen flugenhofen that's one of my favorite words to say when i stub my toe <laughs> i like to say flugenhofen that's pretty great <laughs> so um let's see all right i'm gonna go back did you did you crop it a little bit there yeah I, I zoomed it in for you it looks cool i I really wanted to see like a close image of that, that charlemagne statue so hey we got mr taylor in the house mr. Taylor! i also saw andrew hello Price mr taylor Austin. hello thank you for joining us today thanks for having me and you know what i'm so glad mr taylor's here because he also has a history degree and he is very knowledgeable about Martin Luther and the Reformation. So he can hop right in and talk about it. Where is he? I don't see him. Oh, there he is. Hi. And I see Andrew Price too. Actually, I see Andrew Price's puppy. So um, Andrew, I know you told me to talk more about modern times. I did do a little bit of uh, chit chat about what modern Germany's like, but uh, I will tell you that most of this is about the history of Germany. So, again, I semi apologize. Um, let me skip forward, actually, and I will talk some more about uh, modern Germany just a little bit. So, one of the great things about um, Germany is they have an amazing train system. And so I did not have a car when I was in Germany, but it didn't matter because even though I was in kind of a relatively small town, kind of like San Marcos in Germany, I was in a place called Linden. I could catch a train to a main hub or a main city like Munich, Nuremberg, Frankfurt. And then from there, I could go anywhere on a train. And so all these places that I'm showing you are places that I hopped a train and I caught um, because they just have this really amazing network of trains. Um, and so like that picture on the left is a train, I think in front of um, Cologne Cathedral. Wow. That, that is Germany right there. You have really ancient stuff next to incredibly modern stuff. That that's <laughs> up Germany right there. And then the picture on the right is the Nuremberg, um, the Nuremberg train station, which I went into like every weekend that I was there so that I could, it kind of was a hub so I could go to Bavaria and to Munich. So the train system there is awesome. And it makes me wish that we had that here because that makes life so convenient. You don't have to park your car. You don't have to drive. You just hop on and go. Well, I'd heard that there was, they're trying to make a rail that goes from uh, San Antonio down to 
uh, I guess Laredo all the way to Dallas. They had talked about it for a long time, and that's probably something we will never see in our lifetimes, maybe in uh, the kids' lifetimes. But I, that would be su super beneficial for Texans because Texas is so big. Imagine, you know, if you've ever driven out to El Paso. Have you ever driven out to El Paso? Yes. It's, like, it's like eight hours long. It's like the longest yes. drive in the entire world. Yes. And so imagine going from Houston to El Paso in like an hour, right? That would be amazing. That would be so awesome. And a side note, um, my father is retired now, but he worked for the Federal Highway Administration in Texas. Mm -hmm. And for a good 10 years of his career, he worked on that superhighway. Wow. Uh-huh. And so he spent a lot of time – they were trying to get the land right, holding hearings. And, uh -huh. um, and it's, it's going to be on the I-69 corridor. And so he spent a huge chunk of his career trying to make that happen. But he's retired now. Wow. I, didn't, I guess I really didn't realize that. Um, but that's awesome. Yeah. So Oil the, lobbies are too powerful in Texas. We'll never have public transportation. It was, I mean, he spent 10 years. And they got the interstate built because they started by trying to build I-69 up from Laredo. And then they were trying to, along that, build the um, super highways. But like you said, maybe someday in our students' lifetime, that would be awesome. Because okay. it makes life so easy to hop on a train, go anywhere you want, and hop off. It's, I mean, it's awesome. Um, the other way to travel through Germany, I mean, there's, you know, you can hop on a plane, but the Autobahn. And the Autobahn is their major, super fast highways through all over Germany. And there's no speed limit. You can drive as slow or as fast as you want. And it is a little, it is, if you're not used to driving on it, it's a little bit frightening. It so can, you, bit can you tell us about your experience? Were you able to drive on there or were you in a car or a taxi or something? Um, I did get my international driver's license and my friend lent me her car and I did drive through like a back country road and that was stressful enough. But then she would drive us on the Autobahn and even as a passenger. So what happens like here, it's a five lane highway, but there's some places where it's a two lane highway. So what will happen is in the right lane, someone will be doing, and I'm going to say 55 miles an hour, but they did kilometers per hour in Germany. They're totally on the metric. Right. Um, so we're doing, you know, someone in the right lane is doing 55 and you're like, oh God, I have to pass these people. And you pull out to pass them. And then here comes someone doing 120 miles an hour in the left lane. And you're like, oh my God, oh my God, let me get back over in this slow lane. <laughs> so yeah. you were the slow person, but in the fast lane, right? Right. Like you're doing 75 miles an hour and then all of a sudden here comes someone doing 125 miles an hour and you're like oh my god please don't wow. kill me please wow. <laughs> my dad told me that when he uh, was in germany um that he had rented a vehicle but they didn't he, they didn't give him like a good vehicle they gave him like a kind of a crappy car so he wasn't able to like really get into it but my uncle while he was living in there he had a bmw and he would um I imagine he would probably drive pretty quickly. Yeah. If you love to speed, the Autobahn is your thing. Um, but it can be pretty frightening. So after that one time I traveled kind of a back road and it was stressful enough. And, and they do um, drive on the right side, unlike England, which is really confusing. I was like, no. I mean, because, you know, they, the uh, traffic signals and the signs are slightly different and the paintings on the ground are slightly different. And I was like, mm, I'll just stick to catching the train. I'll just, you know, catch the train. I'm good on the train. Um, okay. So I was in Germany for six weeks. And during the work week, Monday through Friday, I work in the library, a lot like Chapa's library on an on a army base. But then every weekend, I traveled to a different city. So um, this is one of the cities I traveled to. And we pronounce it Cologne, which it is where perfume or Cologne came from. They spell it slightly differently in Germany. And so let me go back over here to my map. One of their most famous things there is their cathedral. They have this huge Gothic cathedral. So a Gothic cathedral is a church that's about a thousand years old and it's ginormous 
and it um, has all these things they call them flying buttresses, which are these huge walls that actually hold the cathedral up. And so, um, just so let me zoom out so y'all get an idea where Cologne is. It's actually really close to the French border. Is Mr. Taylor a buttress? He holds up Chapa Middle School around mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. We could call y'all both flying buttresses. <laughs> that could be our tag team wrestling name. <laughs> the flying buttresses. I like it. Oh, I love it. Here, let me show you what a, a real flying buttress is. <laughs> so, um, they are these huge supports because they did not build with steel frameworks. They just stacked heavy stone on top of each other. So down here, especially this one, you can see they had to have some way to hold up those really heavy walls. And so they figured if they made these huge things that jutted out, that they could hold up really heavy walls. And they did a pretty good job because a lot of these cathedrals have been standing for 1,200, 1,300 years. Now, some of them are starting to shift, and um, there's a lot of concern in a lot of old cathedrals that they're like one great like seismic activity or something and the whole thing could come crumbling down. Like I've even seen like they worry about that about Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's pretty good. A thousand years standing is not bad, not bad. So here is Cologne. Actually, I thought I said it was near France, but it's near the Belgian border. And so I started out in Frankfurt. Actually, it was a little tiny town beside Frankfurt called Gießen. Hopped on a train and I went up to Cologne, which was just like a three hour train ride. And um, the, there were several things I looked at, but the one that I found most fascinating was the Cologne Cathedral. And so it's actually supposed to be white stone. But if you noticed anything about limestone, it, as it ages, it gets really dark and black. Uh -huh. And so um, that is what they have power, power washed it before to make it, you know, um, shiny and white again. But over time, just because of weathering, it turns back to this sort of black, dingy stone. Well, it also has to do with pollution as well. Yeah, so pollution actually helps uh, make it dingier, um, but yeah, uh, time and weathering for sure will do that. So, and you can see this was actually a beautiful, actually all the cities, I have to say all the cities in Germany that I went to are beautiful. Now the ones in Eastern Germany, like Berlin and Dresden, mm -hmm. they had a lot of damage and then they were under Soviet rule for so long, they didn't rebuild a lot of stuff. But all of the cities in Western and Southern Germany, they've rebuilt and they're gorgeous. So you can see like, here's a picture of it along the river and it was just a beautiful city. And so I, but I felt like that almost everywhere I went was a beautiful city. Okay, so that's Cologne. Um, another one of my favorite cities to visit. So again, I hopped on a train. I'll show you where I went. I went from Frankfurt to Munich. And I passed through the Black Forest, which if I have time, I'll talk about the Black Forest. But um, a couple of things. The Schwarzwald. The Schwarzwald? The, oops, back space, back space, back space. So a couple of cool things about Munich is um, they have a huge, they are known for their um, Oktoberfest. And it is a, like, a huge celebration. Millions of people come to it. It spans about... I think three week period from is, is that during March? Yes, exactly. March and April. Okay. That's why they call it October. <laughs> exactly. It starts at the end of September and it's really like, okay, so what it really is is like a fall harvest celebration. Uh -huh. and people used to be farmers and they got in all the crops and they had all of their food ready for the winter. They'd say, let's celebrate. And they'd have a nice, refreshing glass of root beer. Mm, that's Mr. Taylor's favorite. <laughs> that's the, I think that's probably the only soda that he actually drinks. Root beer. That's not true. <laughs> that's, the only that. one, that's the only one he's ever ordered from uh, Whataburger, that's for sure. <laughs> true. I do love a good root beer. 
So, so that's, that's sort of the origins of Oktoberfest was it was a time to be like, okay, we worked really hard all summer, all fall. We have all our food ready for the winter. Let's have a giant celebration and celebrate. And of course you had a lot of wheat and hops. And so what were you going to make with that? Mm -hmm. Root beer. Root beer. <laughs> and so um, they have a huge festival every year, which Sadly, I've already heard this year they've called it that they're not going to have their Oktoberfest. No. I know. I know. But, I mean, millions of people come and sit. You sit super close together at a table with people you don't know. And so um, that picture on the left is a place called Hofbrau House, and it is like a legend. It is a beer hall, root beer hall. You can also eat there. And everybody goes to the Hofbrau house. Like you make a pilgrimage there. And um, I went and I had a nice Coca-Cola. But um, you sit with people from all around the world. And they just sort of cram you in. And so like when I went, I was traveling alone. I, I had a friend I was staying with in Frankfurt. But when I went to Munich, I was by myself. And I said, I just want to sit down and have a nice root beer. And they put me at a table with people from... Australia, from England, from Italy, like we were just shoved in there together. Uh -huh. it's really fun because then you start talking to these people from other countries and they're tourists like you. And so it's a really fun place to eat. And isn't, then, isn't there a Hofbrau in New Braunfels? Yeah, there used to be one in Austin and they had really famous steaks. Yeah. You know what? That used to be on 6th Street, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's still there. Is it? Yeah, uh, I really wanted to go and check that place out. Hofbrau is a common last name in Germany. So in Haus means house. So Hofbrau house is just like saying Krejci's house or Taylor's house. And so... While uh, we're on the subject of Hof, can you talk about David Hasselhoff and how popular he is? In oh Germany? my God. The German people love David Hasselhoff. He is like... <laughs> A mega star in Germany. I mean, he brought down the Berlin Wall. I mean, come on. He, in Knight Rider, his <laughs> star, people love it. He's, love he's a star in America, too. Don't act like he's not. Oh, but there, he is, like, huge. It looks like we have a question raised by Judah the Crafter. Hi, Judah. From Miss Richie. Yes, sir. Um, so, I hear all this history, and I'm like, with all this history, there must be some food culture as well. And, uh, I, I, and I do, and like Mr. Taylor, I do like a good, uh, I do like a good bottle of Wurzel beer or root beer. So, do you, do you recommend any food from there? Because I don't know hamburger. That's a Judah, you have the best questions. Yes. Okay. So again, modern Germans eat a lot of the same food we do. They're very health conscious, very health conscious. They eat a lot of salads, vegetables, chicken, fish. Like in a typical day, if you went home, that's what your family dinner would be. But in restaurants and for holidays, they really like traditional German food. And so since I was a tourist, I had, I had a lot of salads, but I had a lot of traditional German food. And so they like sausage and they call sausage Wurst, W-U-R-S-T. That means sausage. The worst. The worst. They, um, one of my favorite things to have was something called schnitzel, mm, which schnitzel, schnitzel is kind of related to chicken fried steak it's um they take meat and they pound it out and then they fry it in breading and it is delicious they like anything potatoes so they call them kartoffels and so like um potato pancakes fried potatoes um all kinds of potato stuff they like cabbage so, like, a lot of red cabbage, sauerkraut, onions. Um, I like the German-style potato salad that you can find at the Salt Lake. Have oh, you tried that? Oh, my God. Yes. I, I mean, I'm not really a potato salad kind of guy, right? I, I, 
I'm like Mr. Taylor. I'd rather have an extra taco than an ice cream, but the potato <laughs> salad at uh, Salt Lake is really good. I will agree with you. And yes, so that's like a German inspired potato salad. So, um, um, and so like also kind of like what we considered barbecued meats, you know, barbecued beefs and chickens and stuff like that. So I love the traditional um, German food and whenever I could, I would definitely get it. So real quick, I have down there in the right, the symbol for their soccer team. Soccer is huge there. Mm -hmm. and it just so happened when I was staying in Munich, they won some kind of huge championship. Didn't so they, when, it was this, are you talking about the Bayern Munich or are you talking about the German national team? The Bayern Munich? Yeah. That's the Munich team. And so the night that I was trying to, like, I was there, there were literally hundreds and thousands of people in the streets celebrating. Um, I mean, there, I, I don't even know. I think I went to sleep at two or three in the morning. <laughs> so many people were outside of the hotel just so excited because they won some kind of big, um, I don't know exactly what championship, but some championship. What year is this? um 2005 okay well i will say that the german national team actually won the world cup in 2014 i will look up fc baron munich when they and it could have been just like a local something or other but they were excited so i'm skipping forward real quick to nuremberg to show um judah he asked me about the food so oops sorry guys Oh, no, 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 I keep cleaning, I, there, okay. Um, <clears throat> so these are some pictures from Nuremberg, which is um, in Bavaria, which is kind of the south of Germany. And so down there, Judah, do you see, I'm eating, um, it's a soda, they really like, um, they call it apple schorle, which is apple something or other. They really like like um, sparkling sodas and, and waters. So that's like a fruit drink with sparkling water in it. And then this was a street fair I went to. And so you can kind of see, um, I think I had potatoes and sausage. And they do, they love rolls. Like, you know how on every corner here, there's kind of a taco place? Yeah. On every corner in Germany, there is a bakery. They do love baked goods. Oh my rolls. God. I, I am a carb fiend. I love bread. I love rolls, tortillas, baguettes, pretzels, anything <laughs> bread. I just love it, man. I, ugh. You, can you agree with that, Judah? I see you. He's like, testify. Mr. Coach yeah, D. I, can, um, Coach D, have you ever had a concha? I've had uh, conchas, yes. They're they're so good. I feel like I feel like if someone it just comes to Germany with concha, just selling con, uh, concha cart on churros, every they they'd be making good bills. All right. Well, well, I have to tell you, Judah, they have almost the exact same thing as a concha and a churro. Um, I don't remember what the German word is for it, but it's very similar. Like you go into a bakery. And I mean, that's the other thing too, is a lot of these countries, you know, are very similar, like Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Germany, Prague, they all have very similar bread items and bakeries and stuff. They share a lot in common. And so <clears throat> Andrew told me I should talk about modern music in Germany, which um, they do mostly like modern music. I personally loved it when they had a polka band. <laughs> <laughs> but that's very old-fashioned music and so but man anytime they had an accordion I'll just say I love a good accordion uh -huh. music. love it so uh -huh. I want to piggyback off of that Mrs. Krejci so while teaching Texas history we learn that Germany and Czechs moved into Texas and mainly in the central Texas area, which is why we have cities like Fredericksburg and New Braunfels and, uh, you know, there's all types of that culture here still. Um, but when that, when the Germans meshed with the Mexican cultures, they 
taught each other different things, right? And Tejano music is actually German polka music, right? Just in Spanish, right? right. So that, that, that polka music is definitely Tejano. And then another thing that the Germans taught the Mexicans was how to uh, brew beer. So lager styles of beer is, is, is the Mexican beers is all German style beers. So, absolutely, I've I've read some stuff about that too, and that's the beauty I think of Texas and America is the great melting pot that we are, and so I um I know like some really famous conjunto stars who play the accordion, mm -hmm. and they cross over very easily, like you said, um, from Czech polka music to conjunto music, and um so my family's Czech, and so my whole life. Since I was a child, my parents, my grandparents have been taking me to polka dances for Czech music, but nice. it sounds exactly like conjunto music. Right. Yeah. And right. that's all tuba. I learned to play the tuba when I was in middle school and uh, I, up until ninth grade, I played the tuba, and of course, which translated into playing the bass. But I still, every time I see a tuba, it, it gets it gets me going, and uh, it reminds me of Mr. Smith, who I'm sad to to hear he was moving on to layman because he was a bobcat tuba player for Texas State. Did you know that? Who was Mr. Smith? Yeah, he was a tuba player for uh for the bobcat band for Texas State. I didn't know that. I do know one really cool tuba player, and that's Jonas Taylor. What? That's cool tuba player. My nephew is actually learning to play the tuba as well, and he's like fifth grader, sixth grader. I love me some good tuba, some good accordion, and yeah. So I just wanted to skip forward real quick. Here, let me show you where Nuremberg is on the map. Let me uh, go back to the map. So Nuremberg, again, was another one of those cities that um, during World War II, they housed a lot of the Nazi government. And so um, it was bombed um, Nuremberg. Um, it was bombed and destroyed completely. But as you can see, let me click on some of these pictures. Nuremberg is one of my favorite cities too. They rebuilt all these houses and all these cathedrals. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of my, and, and so, and I'm showing you all these old cities. All these places that I'm showing you have a modern downtown with skyscrapers, just like in Austin. But then they have the old city, which is surrounded by a medieval wall, because that used to be how they protected themselves, is they closed the gates at night and keep people out. And so I was really drawn to all the old city. Um, so a lot of a lot of what I spent my time was touring through all the old parts of town. So please don't think that's all they have is the old parts of town. <laughs> I'm just showing you that because that's what I loved and I was drawn to. But like all of this was rebuilt after World War II. Um, but and kind of an interesting side note about a lot of these old towns and cities. Um, let me show you Rotenberg also. A lot of these are so well preserved because um, what happened is Germany was really flourishing in like the 1400s, 13, 1400s. They built these really beautiful towns. They put walls around them. And then um, they hit a major recession. And Mr. Um, Mr. Taylor can speak to this because they had these um, big 30-year wars, peasant revolts, then the Reformation came along. And so what happened is there was so much war and so much fighting that they bankrupted their cities. And so from like 1500 all the way to 1900, basically 400 years, they weren't, they didn't really add to these cities or build. And that's why they're so well preserved is because they hit this major recession and it kind of just kept the cities frozen in time in a status quo. Hmm. And like I said, Mr. Taylor knows a lot about Martin Luther and the Reformation, right? A little. And the peasant revolt? A little. I don't know. I wouldn't say a lot. A little. Oh, come on. Pshaw. 
<laughs> so um, this is again Rotenberg. Oh, this is this is. I would say Rotenberg's my favorite, favorite, favorite town in Germany. Um, it was just so beautiful, and I was so fascinated. It has this giant wall that goes around it from the medieval period. Rotenberg. And it says Ob de Tiber. And what that means is Rotenberg is the name of the city. And Ob de means over the Tiber, which is the river. Okay. So it's basically saying Rotenberg over the river Tiber. All right, Miss Crazy, we got just a couple more minutes. Any pressing German details you would like to include before we end today's session? Okay, yeah, one more thing. So here's the wall that surrounds the city. Real quick, just some helpful stuff. These are the phrases I used the most when I was in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, first and most used one was, Wo ist da Toiletten? Where is the restroom? <laughs> so that, and the, and the W is pronounced with a V. It's like a V. Wo ist da Toiletten? Wo ist da Toilet? Who is that toilet? And then the other one, wie viel kostet das? How much does this cost? <laughs> wie viel kostet das? Wie viel kostet das? And then um, another one I use, Bahnhof means train station. So another one I say a lot was, wo ist das Bahnhof? Where is the train station? Wo ist das Bahnhof? And then one I used quite a bit was, Entschuldigung, which means, excuse me. When I'd run into people or <laughs> on toes or do something very American in a German culture, I'd be like, oh, and shoot the gong. <laughs> very cool. Thank you I'm for that. I like there. that. All right. Do we have any questions from any of the kids before we leave? I know Judah has been waiting patiently. Uh, quickly, Mr. Judah. Um, thank you for. Thank you for uh, this tour. Thank, thank you, Miss Craig. And uh, my last name is actually uh, German. Burma? What does it mean? I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. My my dad hasn't figured that out either. But it just all I know is that it's Fairlock in German. How interesting! You're gonna have to do some research on that, Judah, and tell me what it means. Even Schubach, right? That's probably a German name. <laughs> I was gonna say Alex. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, uh, shoulder shrug. I don't know. Oh, okay. Schubach, Schubach has got to be German. Right. Hmm. Mr. Cochran, any questions for Ms. Krejci? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, um, did you go, wait, did you go to the Berlin Wall? No, I just um, only passed through Berlin on a train. I was going to Prague in Czechoslovakia, so I didn't really stop in Berlin. I just saw it out the window. Oh. MJ, you got a question for Miss Krejci? No? Diego? Is that uh, Micah I see down there? Is that Micah? Yep. Hi, Micah. He's saying what's up. Uh, we got a puppy named Andrew Price. You got a question for Miss Krejci? No. All right. I'm glad he showed up as Andrew Price because when he shows up at my office, he shows up as Ms. Taylor uh. and Ms. Campbell. <laughs> or my favorite is he shows up as reconnecting with a little spinning dial. Nice. My favorite. Oh, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor has a question. Yes. Uh, my question for Ms. Krejci is how did you get to be so awesome? Oh, well. Right do you have two hours? Because <laughs> if you have two hours, I could. No, I don't. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. That's a very nice compliment. I'm ready to read it all about it in your memoir. In your memoir. Yes, my memoir. Hi, Diego. All right, you guys. Well, that concludes today's session. We appreciate you, everybody who came and visited Mrs. Krejci. That I learned a lot about German. Uh, history and culture today and I really appreciate that. That's I miss you guys so much. I miss you so much. For real though. I can't wait to see you soon as soon as possible. August whenever. All right you guys. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye guys.